So I'm Leslie Maduki and I'm uh, very honored and very privileged to be here in New York City and to talk about, talk about our very first uh, public concert uh, in the United States uh, January 29th in the Beacon Theater, what a legendary venue as well. And uh, we played our Wings of Freedom concerts uh, and, and famous European uh, iconic venues like the Hammoth Apollo in London and the Olympia in Paris and the Concert House in Berlin. The famous uh, largest rock festival in uh, uh, Europe, the Sigurd Festival, which happens to be opened up 25 years ago. So, and we've been awarded, and uh, later on, uh, and this was a great, great honor and privilege, uh, and a uh, poly the festival in Cannes, uh, southern France. And uh, so, I'm, I'm very, very happy that uh, we make our very first touchdown in the United States in a, a fabulous Beacon Theater on January 29th. Uh, a day after the Grammys, as a collaboration with the Grammys, and beyond. of course, it's a great moment of life for a, a guy who was born behind the Iron Curtain uh, in Budapest and living in uh, nearby Munich, uh, Lake Sternberg, and traveling his life uh, away as a musician. As, as I'm, I'm very, very pleased that we are uh, just in the collaboration with the Grammy organization and, uh, and its music care. We are here, and and we can play this uh, kind of very ambitious, very uh, idealistic kind of music, where what is based on the idealism uh, um, of the 70s and, and the craftsmanship of the 70s, um, you know, because we all became musicians because we had the feeling that music can change the world to be a better place. Oh well, uh, the story is kind of simple. Everybody, all of us. Um, kind of uh, dark moment of life. My darkest moment of my life it was as my father was died. Uh, he had cancer and he lost the fight against cancer. So, and I was 16. And the very, very last day of my father, I was sitting next to him and said to me, uh, "Son, uh, you have to promise to me that my grandchildren are never gonna read censored papers." So I said, "Daddy, there is the Iron Curtain," and he said, "It's not for you." Go and uh, live your dreams and don't dream your life. And I was giving me a line, what I wrote a song about, a dream is not a fool. But I learned that um, dreams can only fly on the wings of freedom. So when I came and I escaped communism, I was a leading voice of the uh, anti-communist uh, Students mo movement. Uh, we played a lot of illegal concerts against communism, against censorship, uh, censorship. and uh, so as uh, as I escaped and uh, we came to the refugee camp with a dear friend of mine who you know, uh, because Gabor Chupo, who was uh, doing the Sim Simpsons, Rugrats, Real Monsters, Darkman, so so the, the Hungarian band. So uh, um, so we were you know school friends. So. Um, so then, then we, uh, I was in a refugee camp, and uh, Gabor been asked, uh, said, "What are you going to do here?" He said, yeah, going, uh, I'm, I'm going to Hollywood and, and founding a film studio." What's, you know, that was, and the plan went on, and he did it. So it became very successful. And I said, "Well, uh, my uh, vision is to play with Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull and L.D. Mola from New York, and uh, and Jack Bruce of Cream, and so they were the founding members then of the Manduki Soulmates band. So if I say we, uh, I'm, I'm talking all about this uh, uh, group of legendary iconic musicians who were influencing me as a young kid behind the Iron Curtain and became the members of my band. So so I've, this is a, a wonderful moment of life that as a songwriter and a musician, you can play the songs uh, what you write with the best band ever. So, uh, and then this uh, Ian Anderson on the flute and then the vocals is Bobby Kimball of Toto uh, was singing. I mean, it just was the how we started. Uh, Jack Bruce, late Jack Bruce of Cream playing bass and singing. Uh, David Glenn Thomas of Bloodshot and Tears singing. Chris Thompson of Ben Friedman Earth Band. And later on, Nick uh, Van Eed of Cutting Crew was joining us. And then uh, some stage we just said, hey, we, we need, need a girl. I mean, we are a boy band. And we just really need a girl. <laughs> and we were just kidding. I was sitting sitting in a, a, around a table next to the studio by the lake and uh, uh, had dinner and uh, and we had beer mat, uh, mat on, the, on the table because this German is 
uh, you have always this mirror man. Uh, I said, and uh, and then uh, I said, okay, you know what? We play a game and everybody writes down the name, uh, which girl uh, should sing in this boy band. And uh, okay, and then we all, you know, hiddenly uh, wrote down, and everybody said, like, okay, let's this guy. Oh, everybody wrote down Chaka Khan. So, so I called Chaka, and she was joining us. So, and and a lot of great uh, jazz musicians uh, of this jazz rock, mainstream jazz. They were like uh, the fabulous Michael and Randy Brecker and uh, um, Bill Evans, uh, and then John Hollywood was joining us on a super tramp, uh, Mark Hart of, uh, of Crowded House and uh, Super Tramp. So, so we're just growing and growing, and, and, and we are very honored and very privileged to rock New York now. So, And um, we, are, we are playing idealistic music, and, and our music is more um, handwritten love letter. Uh, to our audience, it's not a text message. Pop music is just very often is like a text message today, and uh, so and um, I mean you are two ladies. Now. I mean, uh, what would you like to get? Uh, handwritten with a pen, love in a love letter or a text message? So, so, uh, so, so we just sort of very analog in a digital world. We just stick onto this, this uh, um, kind of idea that the world is disputing what is dividing us and we are creating music what is uniting us you know so uh we, we wrote a lot of songs about universal values of life and uh it's just handcrafted it's just analog it's just just a bit uh, but it's new it's fresh so uh, so this is this young, like uh, our keyboard player is 30 years old and uh, triple Grammy winner uh, Corey Henry. So this is just, um, that's why I say this is not, it's a kind of band, you have a lot of bands out there that, then, then of, um, that they're just playing what they became famous for. You know, uh, we're just playing what made us to be musicians. You know this idol is uh, the craftsmanship to play to to practice and and uh, so of course we, we are quoting the big hits of each other but uh, but this is not the you know the point the point is to create new fresh messages uh, which is all very much you know narrowing the future you know and uh, why wings of freedom because um, I think that uh, the young generation today uh, was growing into freedom as, a, as something as organically natural and, and uh, uh, what else than freedom. So just everybody can do whatever you want. And um, we do believe that freedom is something very essential, uh, what needs to be protected and has to uh, pass to the next generations than, than how precious freedom can be. And um, the tragedy of the Second World War is very much behind us. Um, but the teachings uh, are very elementary. So, and I was a very young kid as uh, the Hungarian students were, uh, I was sh sitting on the shoulder of my father as the Hungarian students were rising and, and tearing down the Stalin statue and were screaming out for freedom. And that was something but uh, uh, so influential on my life. Uh, and uh, then uh, their dreams of the Pesti Shrazok, they became in a, in a Time magazine, the man of the year back then. Uh, and my father was one of them. And, um, and I was talking to my son about three years ago and to my two daughters about uh, this phenomenon. And I realized that, uh, that I owed a new generation to, to my kids to explain how precious freedom can be. And, and uh, they shouldn't take us for granted. We should have, uh, have to keep it and, and, and fight for it if, you, if it's needed. So an artist are always uh, um, important in a society uh, to raise their voice, especially when, when echo chambers and, uh, and uh, kind of um, uh, momentums are coming up there. The, the the society is is, is uh, um, needs the free thinker, the free minds of of media, the people of artists, and and uh, you know that to 
think thinking out of the box uh, and this is really important and uh, and because only then you can find explore the way and find a way um, to music and art and, and, and rock and jazz and that what we do is actually a combination of uh, of it because um, uh, this th kind of music I had on mind is, is just very much influenced by the British progressive rock like Jet Rotal, like Cream on one side on the other hand side uh, from the New Yorker jazz rock developed by Miles Davis and uh, and uh, Return to Forever Chico and Ali Mola and uh, Fed Rapport with Jules Avignola and so on and what we trying to do and uh, trying to achieve and I'm very happy that we in Europe are so successful with this that um, to to make a fresh new uh, contemporary combination of the jazz rock and progressive rock and with weightful lyrics we're just uh, having a social meaningful lyrics because the best songs are written by life as we all know so this uh, you know we, we are we songwriters don't really create stories life is creating stories and we just write them down uh, and turn it to music and um, so that's what we do and uh, and uh, it's just uh, um, I'm very happy that that actually this purely American idea of, of playing music, what we you know doing in, in Europe with a lot of American guys, we're just bringing back that home <laughs> uh, with all respect to the uh, capital of the world, the cultural capital of the world, to New York City, and uh, on, on January 29th with the Grammys uh, Music Care. And um, I'm very pleased and privileged and honored to to play for the New Yorkers. And tell us about music cares now. Oh well, um, you know, we musicians, we artists are always asked, been asked to for charities, you know, so that we do should do some charity work. And uh, I always said, well, I'm all for it because if we can uh, help to people they are on the dark side of the street then it's the absolutely obvious that we are on the sunny side of the street uh, thanks to audience that we help to the people they are on the darker side but I also said that this is really really important that the musicians are taking care of musicians because um, this is a huge privilege to uh, to have the love of our audience and and uh, and allowing us to to create our art this is just an incredible uh, lucky way of life and I think that we absolutely uh, have to focus on that to to give back to the people who are not that lucky uh, and for some reason they couldn't reach out for the audience or, or, or were, were falling in on the way. It's, it's not an easy life to be a musician. It looks like so we, we just you, we misuse the media to tell that we have an easy, funny uh, uh, life and uh, this is always just a celebrity thing. Uh, um, it's, it's also hard work and it's also vulnerable and a, and a fragile work. And uh, so, herefore, I think it's very important that we do uh, realize that uh, the Grammys um, Music Care uh, does, does something very important to to help to the musicians who were not as lucky as I was. Sounds good. Yeah, because it's like it's not a one-way street. Like you said, you know, with the audience and you. So the fact that you give back, and also musicians, like you say, because you know th you have to practice every single day. It's like it's not like you just go up there and it just sort of appears magically. So you're right; it is very hard work. Well, and and you know we are so privileged that the audience is coming to us and and uh, and um, seeing our concerts and give it all the love. And we artists, we can't claim for it that we would know the truth. We do not know the truth. And politicians are trying to tell you the truth. We not. The only thing what we can tell you, this is this is honesty. Uh, this is authenticity, you know. Uh, as, uh, um, 
this is this is really important um and we can sing songs of a, of a better world of a tolerant uh, world and, and no racism you know so this is something uh um about Oh yeah, I mean, and this is also a generation uh, thing, you know. Uh, um, we, I think are out there so many people they think it's is it's is great to create a positive impulse in a, in a society, but we have to give them a louder voice. We have to sort of amplify that, uh, and um, and it it is uh, my key word is integrity about it you know so we are all can be in different opinion different point of views but but we should serve integrity to to point out what is uniting us and because the world as you say perfectly right i wish i could say well no, you're totally wrong the world is a <laughs> paradise no the world is turning to a mess right now so um so 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 you better watch out and, and you know and, and always Unconvenient artists, you know, because it's so easy to be convenient, you know, so be in the mainstream and uh, and to be the lovely guy and and you don't have any opinion, you're always in the middle, you don't hurt anyone and all this. But uh, first time as the secret police of of the communists were catching me on a stage, <laughs> uh, uh, it was I was 17 because uh, I, I I I was not mainstreaming, I didn't want to really queuing up uh you know and and um i was uh you know i was creating my destiny sort of uh and and uh, and what was not expecting uh, anything um not even i was expecting okay to, to live my life in a place where i was born because i, I thought okay there is communism so i so i can't do that. Uh, i need freedom and um music what we do is just uh only have, makes sense if it's meaningful. If if if, if it's makes uh, when the people are there on uh, January 29th in the Beacon Theater in New York City, you know that that uh, what we are hoping that they go home from our concert and they they think okay, uh, this is a little better world as it was three hours before, you know. So that's 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 what this idealism was driving me as I was a kid. And um, it's still driving me. Yeah, of course. And so, uh, and and um, may I uh, thank you for this word, hope. And uh, but I would like to hope actively <laughs> and loud. You know, so because uh, in my life I learned that if I'm passive and I'm just hoping that someone else is going to fix it it's not going to happen so we just all have to stand up and 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 that's what we all all the younger kids of course and we, we all them so uh, um if we mess around with that intensity as we do it right now uh then most probably we are going to be the first generation as as uh, passing this world uh, we have gotten from our parents in a much worse shape to the to the kids as as uh, and actually uh, this is something very important to 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 pass the world into the better shape <laughs> you know so so and 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 it's complex it comes from the environment social aspects but but uh, you know how we're doing with with uh, with to fight racism you know so this uh, you know to, to get you know clearance on this essential questions of mankind and artists aren't there to do that so because we are uh, you know we are not elected uh, sort of uh, and we are, we just loved uh, by the audience and and we I think we owe a lot to, for this love and, uh, 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 and that's why our music is this uh, handwritten with a pen love letter to the to our audience with respect and um, and as, as I say I don't know the truth but I can promise authenticity um, crazy idealistic music and uh, and uh, wateful lyrics and uh, and uh, kind of uh, 
uh, voice for integrity. Your father is inviting you. You're living the dream, and now you're trying to make other people live their dreams too with your music. So you see, you are passing it down from generation to generation. Of course, uh, of, of course, I mean, and it's, um, I'm very thankful. I mean, uh, I'm, some psychologists would say that uh, I had a horrible childhood because uh, my father was expecting uh, that I'm really good at what I'm doing. Uh, and I, uh, he never said that I should practice, but I know that that um, he was kind of expecting that I do it. And um, once he said uh, he was very sad and came home, you know, end of the year, school year, and I was about 12, and I was not the number one only once. I was number two out of 140 pupils, and. Uh, and he said he's very sad. I said, Dad, I mean, why? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm number two. I said, no, you, you misunderstood life. Uh, you're not number two. You're just leading the losers. And I, I, I was said, okay, wow, wait a minute. Uh, and then um, he said, look, uh, we are living in a, under the communist dictatorship. So freedom is a vision. So the only failure to get out of this is education so and humanity and um, so he gave me a serious push as a musician you know to to he was a musician so uh so i was um, wonderful you know to dive into music and create and and pick up on the street and the air um, this wonderful uh, songs which need to be written down because uh, the life was already writing them. It's just, you know, you have to give a voice to them. And um, it was the teaching of my father and um, I'm very thankful. Uh, so I had a wonderful um, uh, childhood because uh, he was not implying why no, he was saying why yes. And uh, and he was not looking uh, to the bad, but he was going to the great, and uh, and he was le leading my focus to that, and I'm very thankful to that. Oh, looking forward to January 29th at the Beacon Theater. Thank you so much. Thank you. I